today's topic is forces between currents these forces between two currents arise due to interaction of their magnetic fields i will explain to you the forces that arise as a result of these interactions when currents through them are parallel to each other and flow in the same direction and when currents flow in the opposite direction as well we will also predict the direction of the force moreover i will also compare the forces on masses charge and current in gravitational electric and magnetic fields as appropriate now before i start to calculate the force between two parallel straight conductors it is very important to remember that we have studied so far electric force magnetic force and gravitational force you might have studied in the junior classes like in igcse and in grade 8 or 9 which is the force of attraction between two masses okay and electric force arises as a result of force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges and magnetic force we are we are studying in this unit magnet under magnetism so i have told you already in detail that special relativity combines electricity and magnetism or electric force and magnetic force into electromagnetic force in the same way it unites space and time into space time and what is the similarity between all these three forces all three fields electric field magnetic field and gravitational field they are defined in terms of the force on a unit mass unit charge or current respectively as an example see gravitational force at a point is equal to g denoted by g and it is equal to f divided by m force per unit mass and gravity g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square electric field strength e is given by force per unit charge that we have studied under the unit electricity when we were doing electricity and magnetic field strength will be equal to force divided by current and length of the conductor or force experienced by a current carrying conductor which is placed at right angle to a magnetic field and please note that magnetic field in this case will be uniform it means that a current carrying coil when it is placed in a magnetic field it rotates because it carries a, it experiences a force this force is the basis of electric motors that i have told you in the last lesson now other features shared by all these three fields electric field magnetic field and gravitational field are that number 1 they act at a distance between masses charges or between wires carrying currents number 2 strength of each field decreases with the increase in the distance from the source of the field see r is inversely proportional to the force here here as well and in case of magnetic field also we know that as we move away from the conductor strength of magnetic field decreases so represented by field lines the direction of which shows the direction of the force at points along the line the relative strength of each field is indicated by the density of field lines now considering each force separately gravitational force between two identical masses these are not identical so suppose that there are two identical masses each mass is 2 kg so and they are placed at a distance 1 meter apart this r will be equal to 1 meter so force of gravitation in this case will be 6.7 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 newton whereas electric force between two charges 
when each charge is equal to 1 coulomb and they are also placed at a distance of 1 meter, that electric force comes out to be 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 newton, far stronger than gravitational force. It means electric force is the strongest and gravity is the weakest. Thirdly, force per meter on two wires carrying a current of 1 ampere placed 1 meter apart is 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 newton. So as an example, a moving electron around the proton in an atom, in this case, experiences the strongest force. Hence, the gravitational force is the weakest and electric force is the most significant in case of small masses. However, over larger distances and with objects of large mass, the gravitational field becomes the most significant. For example, the motions of planet in the solar system are affected by the gravitational field, but the electromagnetic field is comparatively insignificant. Now, two parallel current carrying wires exert equal but opposite forces on each other. Look carefully at these forces and the resultant magnetic fields around the wires. Wires are attracted when the current flowing through both are in the same direction and wires are repelled when current flowing through them are in the opposite direction. Let's analyze how do these forces arise. Now first of all consider this diagram. Here one current is flowing in the upward direction or you may say into the plane of the paper which is represented by a dot and second current is flowing in the downward direction or you may say out of the plane of the paper. So when the field is cancelled out, we call this point P as a neutral point. And this is again the same case which we have studied all earlier that two currents are flowing in the opposite direction, just a magnified view of the picture. And this is Fleming's left hand rule that force will be on the left hand side when and current and field direction all these three quantities are mutually perpendicular to each other. Let's consider the case of two current carrying wires when current flows through them in the same direction like I1 and I2 they are flowing in the same direction. First of all consider current through conductor 1. Field produced due to this current I1 is at a plane which is at right angle to the direction of current flow and due to the mutual interaction of the two magnetic fields generated as a result of current in these two conductors there will be a force and as I have told already that when current flows in the same direction force between two conductors will be attractive so both conductors will attract each other there will be a force of attraction which can be determined using the formula which we have studied in our previous videos. Force is the product of current and length of the conductor and magnetic field. Now force on second conductor will be equal to the current flowing through that conductor into length of the conductor into the magnetic field generated due to current in I1. Now magnetic flux density is equal to mu naught I1 over 2 pi R where R is the separation between two conductors. It is denoted by small letter R, separation between two conductors and mu naught is permeability of free space and its value is 1.257 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. 1.257 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. Henry per meter. 
okay so by substituting this value of magnetic flux density in this equation we will find out the force which is produced as a result of current through the conductors when both currents are flowing in the same direction so let's substitute the value of b so f will be equal to i2 delta l and b will be mu naught permeability of free space i1 over 2 pi r so by rearranging this equation we get mu naught which is a constant i1 i2 delta l over 2 pi r now force on the second wire this one due to field of the second conductor is also the same it will be same but obviously its direction will be opposite so there will be force of attraction between two conductors so the direction of force on each conductor is opposite in it in opposite direction and we apply Fleming's left hand rule to find out its direction according to which these three quantities force magnetic field density and current these are all mutually perpendicular to each other and kindly note that field produced due to current in a wire is determined by right hand rule we have already studied these two rules in our last videos now i would like to mention one more thing here that magnetic flux density has units tesla so flux density has unit tesla now tesla is a derived unit like unit of force is newton newton is also a derived unit tesla is also a derived unit these can be deduced from the basic units so let's see how we deduce unit of tesla from the basic units so force is same in these two conductors now in order to find out the unit of b let's take this equation from this equation b is equal to f over i2 into delta l now unit of force is newton as we have studied already and i have told you just now that it is a derived unit means we deduce it from the basic units so one newton which is the unit of force is equal to one kilogram meter per second square from newton second law of motion f is equal to m into a so unit of mass is kilogram and unit of acceleration is meter per second square so it is a minus two so we, by substituting this unit 1 kg meter per second square divided by unit of current is ampere and length is meter so unit of b will be equal to kg meter second raised to the power minus 2 ampere raised to the power minus 1 meter raised to the power minus 1 so this and this will be cancelled out so we are left with 1 kg a minus 1 s minus 2 so this unit is known as 1 tesla it is 1 tesla unit of magnetic flux density and we can measure this uh, value of magnetic flux density using a current balance so this is a relationship between derived unit to base units in the SI system.